Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. I'm about to turn in a review to the absolute sound of the Kuzma Sapphire Arm. But before I do and send it back to the manufacturer, let me show it to you. And let me show you the original Kuzma Arm and show you exactly how the four-point mechanism works because it's uh, much easier to see it and explain it than it is to write about it and explain it. So let's do that right now, okay? So this is the original Kuzma four-point arm. I have tape over the head shell wires because I'm not uh, using it right now and there's no point in having the wires hanging down. And so what makes this arm unique is that rather than having a gimbaled bearing, which would normally be like this, or a unipivot, which would be, be like this, or coming from the bottom up, there are four points. So there are two, and those two points fit in these cups. And there are two other points. This is a shaft, a solid shaft inside here, and the two other points are attached to the side of this outer shaft, and that is what the arm rotates on. So those are the four points, two here and two there. Very unique. No one's ever done this before, and no one's ever done it since, and it's a great sounding arm, extremely stable. The, uh, the proponents of unipivots will say that a single point is better because that way all of the energy goes through a single point and doesn't dissipate. But I'm not going to get into that argument. I'm only going to tell you that this arm sounds phenomenal. The one issue with this arm is that the center, this is not, I didn't put this on exactly correctly. The center of gravity of this arm is actually above the pivot points where it's pivoting. And so this arm wa actually wants to float up and that's why it's got a damping trough right here, which I've disassembled. There's a vertical damping trough that if the arm sees a warp and it's going up, the damping trough will keep it from continuing to go up. Whereas many, many other arms have the center of gravity located way below the pivot point and those arms tend to want to go down. And an important reason to know this is because when you adjust your tracking force, if your arm has its center of gravity below the pivot point, it wants to move down to the platter surface. So the higher up you measure tracking force, the more false the reading is you're going to get. You're going to get a reading that's heavier than what it's actually tracking at at the record surface because the arm wants to move down to the platter in a case where the center of gravity is located below the pivot point. So it's very important to measure your tracking force at the record surface. If you, as long as you understand whether your arm has a center of gravity at the pivot point or above the pivot point or below the pivot point. In the case of the four point, the center of gravity is located above the pivot point. So the higher up you measure it, the lighter the tracking force will measure and the heavier it will be at the record surface. So you have to know these things before you use your, your gauge. Try to get a gauge that measures tracking force right at the record level if you can. All right, so that's the basic four-point arm. And the four-point arm also allows you to adjust every parameter. You can adjust azimuth by loosening these two bolts here and turning right right there. You turn that and it rotates around like that. And of course, this has got VTA SRA adjustability on the fly if you uh, need to have such adjustability. And you would just turn this, raise this and lowers it. And there's a, a gauge on the side here so you can get back to where you once belonged, and you tighten it and loosen it by doing that. And the anti-skating is right there. So that's the basic Kuzma arm. This is the 11-inch arm. So setting this up takes a little bit of uh, experience to do it right, but once you get it set up, it's a fantastic arm. It's one of my favorite arms ever made.
This is the Kuzma Sapphire Tone Arm. This is Frank Kuzma's latest tone arm. It's $22,000 in America, approximately. And it uses a synthetic sapphire arm tube. It's extremely stiff, which is what you want. It doesn't have a removable head shell. And it doesn't have VTA SRA adjustability on the fly, but you can adjust VTA SRA adjustability by putting this screwdriver in here and you can raise and lower the arm as necessary. To adjust the azimuth, you loosen this bolt right here and then you insert the right tool in here. This is not the right tool in here and rotate and then you can see the marking right there where it's now parallel. The head shell is parallel to the record surface but by putting the right tool in here and turning you move this this entire tube around this axis and you can adjust that. Uh, here is the Here's the anti-skating. This it's a rod and a lever, typical rod and a lever. And then I'll show you at the back of the arm is the counterweight. And you can see. I just wanted to show you what it looks like with this very heavy aluminum and brass top block removed from the arm. And you can see there are the two points. And you can see he's now, he's now squared off the connection so that um, it's easier to to align the arm when you put it on there as opposed to the original arm which is kind of tricky and also you'll you'll note this right here this is where this goes down in and adjusts the uh, sra vta and that's it this is a very very uh, cool arm and as far as the sound goes, you'll have to read the review in the Absolute Sound coming up. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe to this channel, for goodness sakes. Come on. Stop the nonsense.